Werewolves. Werewolves are badass, from the classic Universal Wolfman to Roman Centurion altered beasts that rise from their graves. When it comes strictly speaking about the lycanthrope film genre, there is a laundry list of fantastic films to choose from, like American Werewolf in London, Silver Bullet, Dog Soldiers, and of course, The Howling, one of the absolute classics of the genre. The Howling came out in 1981 and is based on the novel by Gary Bradner. It's about a news anchor named Karen White who goes on a retreat after a traumatizing experience with a serial killer, but soon finds that she isn't safe when she begins to notice something very odd about the inhabitants of where she's staying. It ends up being a colony of lycanthropes, and the film ends with Karen becoming a werewolf herself, turning on live television to reveal the truth to the world. The Howling spawned some not-so-popular sequels, like the Red Brown and Christopher Lee helmed Howling 2 Steerbo Wolf Bitch, and a god-awful recent reboot that luckily fell so fucking far under the radar that only bitter, masochistic fucks like me know it exists. I actually really like Howling 2. It was one of the first exploitation-type flicks that I got to see as a kid, and it would certainly be a blast to talk about the epic reunion of Red Brown and Christopher Lee since their first get-together in Captain America 2 Death Too Soon, but I've been meaning to cover some Australian exploitation, or osploitation, as it's called in the excellent documentary Not Quite Hollywood, which covers kick-ass flicks like Road Games, Razorback, and Howling 3 The Marsupials. The film begins with Professor Beckmeyer, a man on a mission to prove the existence of werewolves, showing a film reel from 1905 Cape York, Australia, depicting what blatantly appears to be a dead lycanthrope bound to a tree. He tells his class that it's simply a realistic mask, but knows in his heart that it's real. The National Intelligence Agency of the United States have been tracking werewolf sightings in the Soviet Union. Beckmeyer gets this information and presents it to the President of the United States? He's referred to as Mr. President, and he's very American, so Beckmeyer is buddies with the President of the United States. Mr. President isn't buying the existence of werewolves, so Beckmeyer goes to his friend, who is also reluctant to believe in the existence of werewolves. I couldn't imagine why. After I discovered that the Browning film of a supposed UFO was actually a film of a condom filled with dog shit and a flashlight. <laughs> Fair enough. An absolutely stunning woman in a white dress is admiring a snow globe of Sydney. She's part of an abusive feral tribe deep in the outback. When her stepfather gets a little too fresh with her, she nut kicks her way out and hops on the next bus to Splitsville. You should not run away from home. I don't like home. Why, child? Because my stepfather tried to rape me and he's a werewolf. Hey, we've all got our problems, right? Two hobos out drinking find our beautiful feral woman camping out on a park bench. She shows her true colors and they take off running like little bitches. The next morning she's taking in the beautiful sights of Sydney when douchey McAviators here spots her and proceeds to chase her down because boys chase girls. This is Donnie. He's the executive producer on a movie called Shapeshifters Part 8. He wants to offer her a part in the film because she's beautiful and wild looking. Feral werewolf lady's name is Jaboa Jaboa, and she decides to take Donnie up on his movie offer, and they hit it off like clockwork. Jaboa's rapey werewolf family hop on a bus too and head out to get her back. I smell hijinks! Can you act like an animal? Yes. You'll be perfect, darling. You know, this movie is about pop culture. In the 60s, Andy Warhol showed us how pop could be high art. In fact, everything is high art. That's what this is all about. Sounds like a classy picture. What's your first scene going to be? For example, in your first scene, you'll be gang raped by four monsters. I see. So, Shapeshifters Part 8 is only the working title, I take it. The finished product is going to be called something like I Spit on Your Shapeshifter. Donnie takes Jaboa out of the town to catch the latest Vincent Don flick? Actually, this scene is pretty cool. There is a slick homage to the transformation scene from American Werewolf in London. It doesn't happen like that. You know, Jaboa, some of us actually want to enjoy the movie without some jackass blabbering on and on. I'll be good. After some raunchy, sweaty, sexy time, Donnie brings up Jaboa's nitpickery about how werewolves don't actually transform the way they do in the cinematic schlockfest that they were watching. It's wrong. How would you know? Are you a werewolf? Yes. Jaboa is sporting some rock and belly hair and a stomach scar, which either spells C-section or kangaroo pouch. 
Donnie and Jaboa go to a shapeshifter crew party, and Jaboa starts bugging out, either due to werewolf complications or she's really getting into the swing of the movie biz. Vision, dreams of passion. And all the while, I think of you. Jaboa starts losing her shit big time and runs away from the party, and hey, Cronenberg's fly. All right. Jaboa's family show up at the party and fuck shit up, while Jaboa is trying her hardest to hold back from turning into a werewolf, and then she gets plowed by a car. She's taken to the hospital, and it's sealed off because Jaboa has an inhuman anatomy, so Beckmeyer is called in. Let's delve into this whole lycanthrope with a pouch thing. Now, personally, I don't know left from right when it comes to kangaroo werewolves, but I do know somebody who I'm positive is an authority on this matter. No time for formalities. I'm going to be very direct with these questions, so I expect a direct answer from you. I know that you know about the things that go hopping into the night. The beasts that howl at the moon. CM? You're Australian, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I am. You've always known that. Well, then, come on. Kangaroo Wolfman. What the fuck are you talking about? The Kangaroo Wolfman. I know they're native in your country, so I want to know everything there is to know about them. CM, I'm going to be very direct with this question, and I expect a direct answer. How much Viper have you had today? A Mickey's worth. Now you're going to tell me about Wolfman Jack or not. CM, you are the worst. Go and take a nap. Damn it. Well, there goes that idea of having a classy National Geographic style segment on the show, but I guess it's not so bad. I'm positive that I'll be able to get Bigfoot for my episode on Legend of Boggy Creek. I mean, at least he's real. <laughs>